welcome to this week's episode. This week we are going to go through everything coaching. I've been asked to give people an idea of what it's like to be coached in a one-on-one sense that I am with Fergus, how that process works, what's involved, um, all of that information that you might want to know if you're thinking about getting a coach or more specifically maybe a legendary coach like Fergus. So I hope this episode is really helpful for all of you who are wondering whether coaching is the right thing for you. I certainly couldn't recommend it highly enough and I'll explain why throughout this video and show you what exactly is involved in being coached by Fergus, the legend. This is not a paid promotion. This is my opinion and I'm more than happy to share it for free because it's true. Chain from the future here. You will also see some snippets of me talking to Fergus about the coaching process and different questions that I had for him about coaching in general. And I hope you enjoy those because they're really insightful. Grabbing your recreational goals by the balls and investing into them, acknowledging that, yeah, it's a big commitment, but it's a commitment that makes me happy. It's a commitment that makes me better, which means that downstream with all of this, there will be outcomes that are a good use of funds, resources, time allocation, sacrifices from family, all that sort of thing. I started this journey at 145 kilos with a goal to complete an Ironman and change my life. 12 months of work later, I crossed the finish line in Cairns 2024, 30 kilos lighter and super happy. But the journey's only half done. We've got another 20 kilos to lose. I'm aiming to get down to 10% body fat and find that elusive six pack. On top of that, I'm aiming for a high course finish in the Keltman in Scotland, just to keep things interesting. I hope you enjoy my journey each week. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and get notified of each new episode when it drops. I think it's important to do this video from the location where I completed my Ironman this year, because I don't think I would have got here without coaching. I'd like to imagine I could have made it without it, but the truth is that it would never have happened. I would never have made it. I would have got there, I would have got to the event, but I wouldn't have been able to complete it. And so I hope this video helps you to complete your dream and decide whether you really need coaching or not, because I think it's well worth the investment. What's it like having a coach? So I wanted to, I think I'll do this in a couple of parts because I've had a couple of coaches, not in well, I did back way back when I was a teenager, 7,000 years ago, um, had an athletics coach, but that's not really, I can't really count that as an experience with a coach. So what I wanna do is break this into two parts in terms of what it's like to work with a coach and what it's like to work with Fergus. Because Fergus isn't your average coach. Um, He's also a, an elite athlete in several different areas, but rugby in powerlifting. Um, he's done the double brutal. He's done a whole lot of stuff that's pretty amazing. So he's not your average, you know, looks good on the beach kind of coach who can, he's got a lot of relatable information in there that for me was really important. So let's talk about the first part, just having a coach. So what does having a coach mean? So I guess it means a lot of different things, but the biggest thing for me is that it removes the stress of the whole process. So before I had a coach, I was always thinking about what do I need to do next? What's the best thing? How do I manage this? What's the, you know, there was always that stress of what am I gonna do next? How does this all build into a, a profile that fits what I wanna do as an athlete? And having a coach just doesn't, I don't have to think about any of that stuff anymore. I literally look at my schedule for the week and I just get up and I do each of the, I just get up and do whatever's on that day. If it says it's a rest day, I might go for a walk. 
If it says I've got to get on the bike and do a training session, I get on the bike and do the training session. I don't, there's zero stress around what I have to do. I just get in and do it. And it might sound really simple um, because that's what it makes it. Having a coach makes it simple. And I think that, that for me was a big thing like I didn't have to think about where I was going to be in six months, three months, two months, whatever. I just had to do what was in front of me that week. And that's really how you should try to approach life in general, but that's easier said than done. I think the other thing for me, on top of it being really simple for me in just doing what I needed to do, it also meant that I didn't need to have a plan. I didn't have to build any kind of plan. I could just get up and do. Because I'm not an expert and most of us aren't. Most of us don't know how to get from, I've never done any real training before to doing an Ironman. Like that's not a, I don't know, you don't get that training in school. No one teaches you how to put that profile together. So. I think that was a big part of it too because I didn't know, A, when I started this process, didn't even know if it was possible to go from nothing to an Ironman and B, didn't, I, even if I did think it was possible, I had no clue on exactly how to get there. I, I guess one of the reasons that I ended up getting a coach for myself in terms of the iron, doing the Ironman, my original challenge, was that for me, I learned a lot from having a coach, a business coach, to help grow our business because what it showed me is that you don't know what you don't know. And what you don't know generally is a lot, a lot. And I think when I realized that, especially in my business, how much more potential there was there that I just didn't even know about. Um, that was when, when I realized that in business, I kind of figured that that must be true in everything else. So if I wanted to get the most out of myself physically, then I needed someone else who already knew how to get more out of me physically. And so that's what a coach is. And I think, I honestly think we all need it because there are only a very select few people who already have the ability to extract the best out of themselves without any assistance from somebody else. So if you really want to be able to get the most out of yourself, the best out of yourself, I don't see how you can do it without a coach. So it's really pretty simple for me. I just don't see how I was going to get there without somebody who can pull all the right strings put the right plan in place, make sure I'm executing, look at all the numbers, and make sure that I was gonna to get to where I wanted to get to. What's your philosophy when it comes to coaching? Bring out the best in the individual through helping them understand what they need to be doing rather than what they don't need to be doing. Because there's a lot of noise on the internet these days. And I think from our point of view, the minimum effective dose for the maximum effective return is where we try and sit because the tendency when people are trying to balance concurrent goals like yourself is flogging yourself, just thinking that more is always better, trying to always fill every gap with something, when in reality that doesn't actually account for the adaptability and sort of physiological limitations that we need to take into account. You're probably experiencing at the moment, we're in a big deficit. We can't just exponentially increase that deficit otherwise you just waste away and feel horrendous day to day whilst we're also simultaneously trying to perform and move things forward so whatever an individual's goals it's a case of trying to understand their context from an individual point of view so minimum effective dose for maximum effective return within the context of somebody that has seven children will look different to somebody that has zero children for example there is no optimal way of doing things because life is not optimal and the difference between a professional athlete training for something is their sole existence and sole purpose. The reason they wake up in the morning is for the session that they've got that day. 
is a very different way of trying to manage things than it would a recreational athlete who are the vast majority of people that we work with. So in a nutshell, that's kind of it. So why Fergus? Because obviously there are a lot of coaches out there in the world and, you know, they're all, I, I obviously I can't speak about any of the others, but why Fergus for me? Well, again, that's pretty straightforward. Well, it was for me anyway. I wanted someone who knew, knew how to push themselves beyond normal human limits. How do I explain that? I'm sure there are thousands, millions maybe, of great coaches out there who can take you from point A to point B with a plan and all of that kind of stuff. What I wanted was somebody who knew how to get the most out of your mind. And I think the main thing that led me to Fergus was watching him do his extreme challenges, the double brutal 250k run, whatever it might be, pick it. Um, the way he approached it, the mental side of it, because I knew that someone could put together a plan for me to train for a, an Ironman. Um, it, it's not, it's a known quantity. You know the steps you need to take to be able to get to an Ironman. That's not, I was gonna say it's not rocket science. It seems a bit like rocket science to me because I don't understand how to do it. I couldn't do it for someone else. What I wanted was someone who I knew had the mental ability to push beyond their limits. Maybe everybody's got this, I don't know. But I knew, I had seen that in Fergus in his videos. I knew that he was wanted to push himself beyond what most people think they should do. One of my, I guess, bits of advice for people in life in general is if you want to take yourself to the next level you've got to put yourself around people who know where that level is and Fergus is one of those people he knows where he knows the I guess um, what it looks like to go to that next level because not many people go to that extreme level and then are able to help someone else get there because that's the other part of the puzzle. You might be able to get yourself to that level, but can you bring someone else on that journey? Can you take someone else from normal to extreme? And for me, uh, it was pretty clear that Fergus had that capability, that knowledge, whatever it is. And I think that was the other piece for me. So that's the main reason why I got coaching and why I picked Fergus. And I think, obviously this is a personal choice for everybody and I can only speak to my experience. But it's been an amazing journey so far. And we're not finished. There's more to do. And I think, <laughs> I don't oh, Fergus and I have a really good working relationship now. Um, he just knows that I'm gonna do what he puts on the, the sheet and I know that he understands why I pick crazy things to do. So it's been great and I love it and I have no plans of changing it anytime soon. You have your own coach still um, and so I find that interesting because I always assumed that you know people who knew what they were doing wouldn't need to have a coach. Why do you think it's still important to have someone coach you even when you know you know know what you're doing? the same reason that senior partners at law firms and financial institutions have wealth managers because once it's your metrics you're playing with there's a very human tendency to overanalyze constantly check have it be front of mind and therefore go back to the drawing board more often than not or have your opinion swayed by a new bit of information whereas being able to just focus on doing the things 
in that example, that generate more money to be managed, or in this case, allow you to just wake up in the morning and know what you're going to be doing from a training point of view, removes all the guesswork, removes all the, hmm, let me have a look at whether this is going to work within this context and how this is going to downregulate my AMPK in relation to, because the amount of people that we've worked with that have got a really good understanding of training, but that by virtue of being as such analytically, means it's very difficult to just trust the process and see things through because once fatigue starts setting in, once you have a bad night's sleep, once you maybe have one too many beers and things don't go the way that you on paper thought they would, that's where it's important to not just tear it all up and start again because we have a tendency to do that. So the more driven you are, the more ambitious you are, the more analytical you are, the more you're going to fall into this trap. It's something I've coined on YouTube before as the Redditor Clause which is very, very relevant in the world of hybrid training, especially, which we specialize in, because there's a lot of people that spend way too much time thinking about the perfect training plan when they should probably be just be training in the first place. So the other thing that people ask me is, what does it look like? How does it work in a week? Like, what does a training week look like? How does it work? What's the flow like, I guess? Sometime... I don't know when now he does it, but when I look at my schedule in Training Peaks, Omnia use Training Peaks, which I guess is the same as any other system. Uh, I don't really pay that much attention to the system itself, to be honest. I look in there on a Sunday when I do my weekly uh, update and I see what's in there for Monday, Tuesday, and usually Wednesday. So I know, and, and normally it's the same thing each week with some variations. So I have my gym on, on the Monday morning. Um, at the moment, it's upper body, oh, sorry. <laughs> at the moment, it's lower body in the morning, and then I have some kind of run in the afternoon um, with interval training, which is just great fun, uh, as you've seen, no doubt. So I will, you can, you can use training peaks on your phone, on the computer. So I'll pull it up and have a look before. I could, usually on a Sunday, I'll check to see if there are any changes, major changes in my schedule. And if not, I'll get to the gym Monday morning pull up my Training Peaks program and do the workout. Um, and then when I get back, I will jump on the computer and put that, what I did into the program itself. So I'll match the, whatever he's asked me to do and put my, if I've varied any of the weights or exercises or anything because of the situation at the gym or whatever it might be then I will put that in um, so he's aware of that so if I did you know 20 kilo dumbbells on a bench press or whatever it might be I'll put that information in so he's got it so once I've put my workout into the system then it will change color go green if I've matched what I've done It'll go red, or it'll be red if I haven't done it. Um, and if I've done close, but not quite, or it's varied from the original workout, then it'll be orange or something like that. And I guess behind the scenes, they use all of that information. I, we don't really talk about that, to be honest, because that's not really relevant. Um, he just is looking for my, for the output side. We talk about what my um, what my goals are. You know, one of my goals before the half Ironman this December, when I go to WA, is to try and run a sub two hour half, half marathon. Uh, and that's a good goal to have as like a sub goal of the other things that are going on. Uh, also want to run, you know, a sub 25 minute 5K, uh, which, seems like a difficult goal at the moment but 
that's just because of the load that my body's under. Um, the fatigue's starting to build up now. And so when I fill out my workout, there's a notes section that I can put in my feedback for that workout. And, you know, last week after my, uh, I can't remember which workout it was after now, um, I put, one of the notes I put in was that I'm starting to feel the fatigue before, you know, uh, over the first few weeks of a, of a session, of a, of a section of my plan, I, you know, it takes a bit for the fatigue to build up, but then when it's in your body, you're sort of always starting off feeling like, you know, <laughs> you're behind the eight ball. Body's starting to, you know, not struggle, but you just, everything feels a little heavier and a little thicker and it's sort of like um, you're running in a denser atmosphere or something. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. I'm sure we've all felt it. When your body is fatigued, you can, it is not as simple to uh, just back up again and again and again. So it's important that I feed that information back to him. Yeah, and I do that through Training Peaks, put my notes in there. It also asks you how you feel, whether you felt strong, whether you felt weak. Um, also asks you about how you rated that workout. Was it really hard? Was it a bit easy? You know, how did you feel during that workout? Because the more information you feed back to your coach, the better they can, you know, punish you the next week. That's how it feels anyway. I don't think Fergus is sitting there figuring out how to punish me, but um, the clearer that feedback is, the better job they can do in terms of, you know, planning for the next thing that you need to achieve. To achieve. Because I'd never, I mean, I'd had a business coach before, um, which is, is remarkably similar, I have to say, to having a physical coach. Um, same kind of, a very different topic, but the same kind of um, process in, in all actuality. So, but if you've never had a coach before, what sort of mental approach, how, how should you prepare yourself to, or, or what sort of mental approach should you have to to make the most of that relationship? Trust, open-mindedness, and patience are the sort of three buzzwords, I think. And a lot of people will come with that, but... I think for some people that do have an analytical mind or feel that they've done things in a certain way, essentially, if you've, if you've invested in the coach, it makes sense for you to utilize that investment as much as you can, which is essentially to maximize the trust that you put into that person. Because the reason you've chosen them in, in the, as a coach in the first place is because on premise, you have that trust. If you then question, shuffle, well, I've done it this way for this many years. Can we keep it that way? Then there's no merit in having a coach in the first place. So I think putting your trust in the person, but most importantly, accepting that they're not going to be able to pick up the best individual approach for you in week one, week two, even week three, week four. We generally say that it takes about three months to really get a grip of somebody's circumstances, context, how they respond to things. And only from then can you really start to understand the sort of physical response to things over time from an adaptation point of view. So being patient with that learning process because it's a two-way learning process. How do I effectively communicate to my coach the information they need? How can they effectively understand the information that I'm giving so that they can make informed decisions as to what to do next? So I think if you're considering a coach, great, but get out of your own way would be my recommendation. The easiest clients that we have to work with to get the most sustainable results, yourself included, are the ones that have total trust in the prescription and are the ones that we can have open conversations with. You can be honest with your circumstances. You're willing and open to understand why things might not go your way on a certain week by week basis or whatever it might be. And then we can adjust and move forwards. And so the week goes on like this. Each workout I put in either upload data or I put in feedback um, or both any workouts that I miss show up as red uh, and usually I'll try to let Fergus know why like you know sometimes uh, I'll miss something because something else has come up um, and sometimes we won't replace it we'll just go okay well that's, that was a miss other times we'll put something else in so so that 
that's basically the to and fro during the week. Um, we also are connected on WhatsApp, so if anything happens that is out of the ordinary or I've got questions or anything like that, I can just message him. Uh, or Tom, for that matter, if it's a nutritional question, I can message either of them and get a response relatively quickly. I am on the other side of the world, so you know I don't expect them to respond in the middle of the night, their time. Then once a week, um, uh, like on, usually on a Sunday, I will fill out the little questionnaire about how my week's gone, what I've enjoyed, what I haven't enjoyed, how the diet's gone, all of that kind of stuff. And then every two weeks we have a, a catch up um, via Zoom and go through any issues that have happened, what's going to happen over the next couple of weeks. Everything's kind of broken into chunks, two week break, two week chunks. Um, what happened in the last two weeks, what's going to happen in the next two weeks, is there any issues around that, do I have to travel, does he have to change the plan, all of that kind of uh, information gets dealt with in that session uh, and those are great, um, usually 45 minutes or so and obviously like I said you've got the WhatsApp if you want to catch up at any time in between. Part of working with Omnia is that I get um, nutritional help because the one-on-one -on -one plan that I have with Fergus involves having uh, Tom available for all of my nutritional assistance which has been great. Um, I don't know whether I use Tom as much as I could because I think one of the big things that I wanted to work out was how to do all that stuff myself. I mean, it's great. Tom could put together a whole eating plan if I wanted, um, you know, but that's not how I, I don't want someone else to tell me what to do in my food. I want to learn how to do it myself. And so Tom's been really good in helping me to understand how all this stuff fits together. So if you weren't a coach and you weren't, being coached or or you were just as an athlete or you wanted to give people advice on the best piece of advice you could about finding the right coach? The more binary and single-minded the approach, the less likely it will be sustainable for an individual. So I think shop around really highlight what do you want from the process if it's absolute maximum service delivery you want access to this thing you want access to that thing you want this you want that you want you want, we want all bells and whistles constant constant communication and constant day-to-day -day access to things then you probably want to go to a slightly more service delivery focused organization whereas if you want access to individuals you want access to sort of real bespoke stuff then that's likely where there's going to be a human being at the other end that needs to manage things and they're very different sort of styles um we have everything from sort of off-the-shelf training plans to the tier that we're on and they're very very differing levels of of service and interaction and i think that's where from a cost versus value versus outcome point of view what the individual wants from the relationship dictates what makes the most sense. So I think it's important to be really clear on that so that you don't compare apples to oranges when it comes to price of one person versus the other, because they might have totally different value propositions. Some of these expertise might only lend themselves to one thing you're interested in, and they might have biases on the other thing that you're interested in. Vice versa, somebody might be far too vague and non-specific. If somebody wanted to come to us saying, I'm an all-in, all-out all out triathlete, I have been my whole life, I want to win the world championships for my age group. I'd probably say, well, why are you talking to us? Because we're the people that will help you balance concurrent goals. And we look at it from a, a bit more of a holistic fatigue management point of view, rather than just out and out optimal performance in a singular sport. Get a piece of paper, ask yourself the question, what do you want from the relationship? What, what, what are you, what are you willing to spend for what, outcomes and then use that as your as your set of principles to determine who's best and yeah it, it may make sure if, you, if you're going to be on a one-to-one -one relationship like we are i think make sure you get on with the person um 
make sure that you understand their communication patterns. For me, coaching has been super valuable. I, I, there's no way I would have completed the Ironman in Cairns if I hadn't have been with Omnia and Fergus and Tom. Like there's just no, like, <laughs> we, can, we can just wipe that one off right now if I hadn't have had them uh, behind me. Not because, I, I, and I say that really easily because I didn't know what I didn't know. And those are the things that would have caught me. I would have been caught out by things that I just didn't know, didn't understand. So I don't know how much more important I can make it in terms of if you're starting like me when you had no real idea, um, you had some determination but you didn't really have a clue, then you, you have to have coaching. Um, because I felt so confident by the end that I was going to be able to do it, um, that it was good, that was great, you know, I just couldn't... Uh, I don't it's hard to describe in honesty like um my confidence when i got to the point of doing the race that i had everything planned and worked out as well as i possibly could it didn't account for things like my feet burning on the day or my back pain but you know things come up thanks so much for watching this week i hope you enjoyed this more in-depth video about coaching and talking to Fergus and what I get out of it. Uh, it really is a, a great process if you want to get one yourself. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification button if you want to see every new episode when it drops. And don't forget to take the next ride.